Hello there. One of my viewers just told me that him and his pals are using my videos as a drinking game. Every time I say it's so much fun, they'll have a shot. So that's not why I'm making these videos, but uh, it's always nice with feedback. Thank you, Tony, and thanks for subscribing. Uh, today is Saturday and I just came from a meeting with uh, some apostates from Denmark. We're planning the Copenhagen protest this year and they are really great people. I only work with people that are better than me, so I'm, I'm happy I found them. And uh, so we had a meeting today and we we'll always start with the theme of the protest because if we want to get media attention, we need one theme. and. We will use the same theme as we use in Sweden and Norway because we got a lot of media attention and media attention creates media attention. And also the legislation, uh, well, the human rights legislation is universal, but also other thing that's typical Scandinavian uh, legislation due to history in uh, Lutheran countries. So the protest will be hashtag all religions must and a message that all religions must respect human rights and especially the UN charts of the rights of a child. And it's easiest to start with this in Scandinavia because in Scandinavia uh, witnesses get government funding. So we argue that the witnesses must be given a choice. Either they respect human rights or they lose their funding. I think that's a great way to start. And it's difficult to witnesses to argue against this. They say, well, you know, our human rights allow us to violate human rights. That's a very poor argument, but they keep making it. But human rights cannot violate uh, human rights. You can't use... Most people know about two human rights. They say, you know, freedom of speech and freedom of religion. That's just the top of the iceberg. There's a lot of uh, freedoms and none of them can uh, violate another freedom. Uh, <laughs> and most important is to stand up for the children, because we, Watchtower have lawyers standing up for them. Who's standing up for the children? We have a lot of, I read a lot of um, stuff in uh, Norway. They try to, they have hearings and, you know, try to, how can we help children grow up in these cults? And it's, it's difficult because they can't just walk into a house and start interviewing the children. And they can only interview them with the parents' permission. And secondly, the children are trained to lie for their parents, like I was trained to. So the only thing that can happen is that people grow up, like me and you, hopefully, and we wake up and we use our time and effort to speak up for the next generation. <laughs> and that's what we're doing. And we're not playing a game. There's a different way of protesting, you know, and all of them are good. Like you protest for your own sake, like um, Christmas is fun or my Jesus is better than your, your Jesus. And if you want to do that, that's really, really, really good. It's good for you. Uh, and you're allowed to have your own protests. But you cannot piggyback on our protest. We put a lot of effort into this. And this will be a one message, secular protest, hashtag all religions must. So, and we are in a row. We have got a lot of attention. And um, like I said, attention creates attention. And these pe I only work with people that are better than me. And the people I met now, they are really serious. Like last week, uh, they were in the Danish Congress on a hearing on those issues and we're speaking up. So I'm really looking forward to this. So, but we would need people to help us, people volunteer, people holding up signs, people... We have the same signs as in Stockholm and we'll use... Because we're in a budget, so we're thinking, you know, we're not wasting uh, funds. <laughs> so we have these signs and we have the color coding blue, white, green, blue, white, green. So we can make flags, we can do different stuff. And we're thinking about asking the protesters to buy themselves a t-shirt, uh, either a blue or a white or a green t-shirt. <sighs> Most people have a white t-shirt already, but because that way we get a stronger visual 
and the protest will be kind of like in London. We go standing outside um, the convention. So we're standing there, the witnesses are mingling, we are mingling. They are looking at us, we're looking at them. But then when they have to go into the really, really, really boring convention and try to sleep, we'd go to the closest restaurant and have a Dennis hot dog and um, a beer. One. And um, then when they're done with their boring stuff, they go out and then, so it's like a convention, but we get the good stuff. We can go to the convention, we can mingle with people, we can look at the sisters, but we don't have to be sitting through all these boring, 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 boring uh, talks. So we get the best of two worlds, but then we also have thinking about other uh, protest sites uh, to get more attention and uh, more public attention and from legislators, because that's what we're working against. We're trying to um, change the world and make a better situation and speak up for the children. So we're working very professionally. You can't imagine how much work it is, uh, but we're getting better and better and working more professional every time. So I'm really looking forward to this. I just wanted to tell you some stories about the protest in Stockholm because we were outside court and this was a small court. So it was very crowded. So the witnesses, they do the love bomb, internal love bombing, you know, like in the courageous movie, you know, there everyone is hugging everyone uh, before the worldly people start shooting. So they were doing that. <laughs> and well, the apostates were also hugging each other, but we had signs and stuff and then we had the journalists and it was Swedish journalist and a Norwegian journalist and we have to go through the security check and I went through the security check and they wanted my signs while someone was talking to me and I was still entangled to a Norwegian journalist through the microphone and the witnesses are there and it's very, <laughs> it's very crowded <laughs> and cramped. And I knew the witnesses would do uh, mind games, like to throw you out of your... Um, um, you know, because I, I, I wasn't in the court, I wasn't a witness like speaking in court, but I was a spokesperson. So I was prepared they would do some stupid things. And believe me or not, they did. So after the court, we were there and there were journalists and there were cameras everywhere. One of the, and I was actually prepared, they would go up and speak to me and pretend that shunning doesn't exist in front of the camera. So I was mentally prepared to that. And believe it or not, that's exactly what they did. So it's actually an old friend of mine. Um, we used to pioneer together. He's a circuit overseer now. And he came to me and said, hello, Jonas, how nice to see. I said, well, hello, and his name. Hello, nice to see you too. He said, how's your wife? And I said, well, my wife left me. Oh, so she doesn't want to be with you. No, well, technically she, she doesn't. How's your parents? I say, well, I have no contact with my parents. Oh, so they have no contact with you. No, I, you, you know what, how Jehovah's Witnesses behave to uh, disfellowship people. I'm an apostate. And he said, that's not true. That's not true. I know your parents want to have contact with you. <laughs> uh, they do stuff like that. So. If you're planning a protest, you have to be aware of that they, they do all stuff like that. And that's actually emotional hard. I, because even though I was prepared, but I, I, I'm Swedish. I grew up down there. So, and when I woke up, I realized that, you know, Jehovah's Witness love, it's not real love. It's, it's uh, conditioned that we love you as long as you believe in Santa Claus, stuff like that. So if you don't believe in Santa Claus, we don't love you anymore. And... Uh, so one of the reasons why I moved back to Norway up here was kind of distance myself from my family. That's really sad because I've actually always been a super witness and really didn't do anything wrong, but still I had to move away from my family for, for strategic reasons. <laughs> Not that I had done something wrong, but I just knew that sooner or later this Pimo thing, fading thing won't work. So that's sad. And I have a lot of memories from Stockholm. Uh, I didn't grow up in Stockholm. I'm a 
from I am from a rural area, believe it or not. But uh, my great grandparents came from Stockholm uh, on my mother's side. All of them, uh, they came to the truth in Stockholm. Uh, but I. My other grandfather, he was a funny guy because he was the kind of guy that never died. He just lived and lived and lived. And it was like almost 100 years and he was on the subway alone. And he was this hooligan uh, harassing people. And um, he came closer to him and he just thought, it's better to kill than be killed. So when this young hooligan came to my 99-year-old great-grandpa, my great-grandpa just punched him in the face. And he had a technical uh, knockout, <laughs> one punch. That's my great grandfather, <laughs> uh, almost 100 years old. <laughs> so he's dead now. He was stabbed in a bar fight. <laughs> now nah, he died the old-fashioned way. But no, nah, he was a cool guy. Anyway, so when I was in Stockholm. I'm just like a short bus ride for my mother to come up and visit me. Uh, and you know, if she would have, she would absolutely love that. Go up to Stockholm, meet on neutral grounds, just go around and look at museums, you know. And if she would have told me that, you know, we can do that and not talk about the truth, I would have done that for her, obviously. I don't like the governing body telling me what subjects I'm allowed to talk to with my parents. So I wouldn't do that to anyone else, but I would do it to my Mother, of course, she's a nice person. And uh, she would actually love that. Just go around one day, but she's not allowed to do that. She will die in Armageddon, according to them. So I was thinking, I'm not a religious person anymore. I don't believe in the a biblical mythology and stuff like that. But think about the Jesus you find in, Bible, in the Bible. If he's a historical person or not, I honestly don't care. But According to the book, he was a great guy. And imagine if he would talk to my mother and said, What's this I hear? Have you been talking to an apostate? Don't you know that's a capital offense? How can you defend yourself? And she would say, Well, you know, it's my son and I love him. I gave birth to him. I just wanted to meet him and, you know, see if he were doing well. And then he would turn to my own pioneer body, the Watchtower representative and say, I heard you've been talking to apostate. That's a capital offense. What do you have to, how can you defend yourself? And the Watchtower representative say, well, I'm a Watchtower representative. And as a Watchtower representative, I'm allowed to talk to apostates because they are, according to Watchtower. Could you imagine, you know, the, 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 the Jesus you find in the Bible would condemn my mother while giving thumbs up to the Pharisees. <laughs> That's disgusting. So my old pioneer friend, he came up to me and was talking in front of the cameras, uh, pretending that this fellowshipping is not a real thing, while my mother is not allowed to talk to me. That's really asshole way to behave. Uh, well, to me too, but mostly to her. All the parents that are suffering from their uh, their rules that don't apply to themselves. So that's really sad. And I, I know how they think because, well, I know him very well, and I also been a lot of Bethel. And it's something they call technically it's not a lie. So they say stuff that's technically true. And therefore, they believe they're talking the truth. Like he said, so your wife doesn't want to be with you. Well, that's technically true. And the other thing he said, I know your parents want to have contact with you. That's technically true. <laughs> but another thing that's true, that's who told them that they're not allowed to. It's the watchtower. So Watchtower representative are allowed to talk to me. If you can find that rule in the Bible, I will buy you a beer. First one who does, does that. That Watchtower representatives are allowed to talk to these fellowship people while parents are not. I do believe that's a man-made rule and a very evil rule. So 
So when I was in Stockholm, there was a lot of childhood memories from there, like family and stuff. And one of the good things with growing up as a witness, because there's a good thing too, that I really like, and that's as a witness, you learn that you can be an alpha male and still cry. I really like that. So walking around in Stockholm and you see all these people hugging and having friends and stuff. And I was there all alone. And uh, so I allow myself to be sad. And if I want to cry, I cry. I don't care if what other people say. So if I set aside 10 minutes to be sad, I will be crying for 10 minutes. And people walking by, they see me crying and they wonder why. And I don't care. If I want to cry, I'll cry. <laughs> But also, I also must say thank you, because there's a lot of nice apostates in Stockholm that contacted me, like Linda, she invited me for dinner, and uh, Kelly called me from Australia to encourage me. So, you know, we can all stand up for each other, and then we can all stand up for the next generation. Because we cannot remove the cult, but we can improve the cult. I personally don't mind if Watchtower takes ice cream money from children. I do not mind if Watchtower take ice cream money from children. As long as the kids get ice cream. <laughs> we can't remove the cult, but we can improve it. So, I'm really looking forward to the Danish protest. And I think it's always nice to meet other people, share experience. So, when I was walking around in Stockholm, I was thinking about the song. It's a Swedish song that's kind of a sad song, but it reminds me about how it is to be shunned or be pimo. So I thought I maybe can try to sing it for all the people that helped me uh, and encouraged me when I was in Stockholm. Don't laugh. It goes like this. Se mig för här, här jag. Låt mig få komma nära till era hjärtan, så som den jag är. Den jag försöker vara, se mig för här, här jag. Min enda längtan nu den är, älska mig för den jag är. Se fjärilvingeslag i alla himlar fara, i alla ögon blinka stjärneljus. Låt livet komma nära, se mig för här är jag. Min enda längtan nu den är, älska mig för den jag är. Min enda längtan nu den är, älska mig för den jag är. So, see you in Denmark. <laughs>